Fusebox back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're doing a hero guide on one of the forgotten, one of the overlooked, one of the underwhelming. He's been called a lot of names and none of them are good. Pitiless. The pitiless one. We're going to get into him and why I built him to 60. Um, there, I saw a few things in his kit. You can hardly find a good guide on this guy. So we'll get into that in just a second. But a little bit of news first. We'll make this quick. Channel news. Uh, I'm going to try to reformat, streamline these things, try to make them quicker to watch. Uh, you know, uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, comment below. We need these things. Uh, all these things help the alg algorithms. Uh, watch these things through. The amount of information being missed when you don't finish these videos, there's so much hidden as I get going and talking about different things. So watch them through. Uh, in the game, Fragment Event, it's wrapping up. I got... I got Iron Brago on all three accounts, uh, free to play, and all I spent on my other two accounts was one shard pack each. And I didn't do that to get Iron Brago. I got that for the 2x event to have some fun. Got some cool epics out of it. So uh, it's kind of wrapping up. There's still a few days to go, a couple events to go. But this is the point where you can, if you've been diligent, you're finishing him off. So enjoy your new hero if you kept up with it. All right, so enough news. Let's get on to the big show. The pitiless one, all right? Every time you watch a shard pull and somebody gets this guy, you hear, pitiless the pitiful, you know? I pity the fool. Pity the one who pulls him. Just horrible things about this guy. That's all you hear. Nah, nothing good. And I know why, and I'll show you why. But I saw some things in this kit, and I caught a few things. They snuck a buff in on this guy, and it's not much of a buff, I admit. But if you do find any of the obscure, older videos on this guy, Let's go over his kit real quick. It's so simple. His A1. He attacks an enemy two times. Each critical hit fills his turn meter by 5%. So, we've got A2. Attacks all enemies. Each critical hit boosts his turn meter by 15%. Obviously, if he's critting, he's increasing his turn meter constantly. And that's his only two moves. Two attacks. One AoE and one two hitter. So each critical hit heals him for 15% of the damage inflicted. That's pretty cool. It's like half of a life still set as long as he's critting. And then his aura fits him well. It increases crit ally in all battles by nearly 20%. So if you're early game, mid game, progressing, I'm going to show you why this guy is not bad at all. If you're late game, I'm going to show you how you can use this guy. What I saw when I read his kit, anything I found looking up guides that there's not many in the past, he didn't have turn meter boost on his A1. That's the only change he really got. But I noticed that, that it actually was here and it was not in the videos I saw in the past. And I started thinking about all this turn meter control and then I started looking at his numbers. Uh, the tools that these guys have. Hell Hades has amazing tools. So does uh, Deadwood Jedi, Chosen. All, all these guys. Thank you guys, by the way. Uh, whatever I become, it's your fault. You created this monster, but your tools are amazing shout out to you guys uh i used them to do my own calculations and this guy looks like he could uh absolutely kill i mean this dude's got murder tattooed on his chest and a pair of lips tatted on his left cheek you know what i'm saying he's like he's for real this guy's for real his damage is no joke uh when we get into his build i want to real quick note that i have no books on him so keep in mind what i show you with this guy in a regular middle of the road build he can get 25 more percent on his aoe and 20 percent more damage on his a1 don't forget that whatever i'm doing just 20 percent more and 25 percent more just imagine that uh, and i will be booking this guy out i built him i did not build him build him because i needed him i didn't build him i've got people i would much rather build i mean these all of these people why do why do people talk bad about pitiless there's nothing here. It's just damage. That's the problem with Pitiless. He doesn't bring speed down, accuracy down. He has no debuffs at all. He has no buffs for your team at all. He just does some self-sustaining and he works on his own turn meter. He can bring, if you're if you're progressing, then some there are times where this crit rate for your entire team can be pretty good, you know. And I'm gonna, in my first way of building this guy, we're gonna use this crit aura so I can get more out of him. So, straight up he's a damage dealer how did i build him as far as sets i really wanted to put this guy in a relentless set uh no not really i did get him in relentless i wanted to use reflex reflex 
has a 40% chance each turn to cool down one random cooldown. When you've only got two cooldowns, it's always getting this cooled down. And don't forget, if he's booked out, this is a three turn cooldown, this AoE, not four. I'm on a four turn cooldown, so when you watch what this guy does in a relentless set, remember, it's supposed to be every four turns he gets back to this. So I didn't have the right numbers on, on uh, the reflex set, so I went with relentless as close as I can get. Getting extra turns gets him back to that move. Uh, I did throw on uh, the Vengeful set. Uh, I did want to get my little bit of uh, ignoring defense on him, plus some extra attack. And I did build him like a nuker. I went with attack chest. I went with the crit damage gloves. Speed boots, as always. And I looked for speed in relentless crit rate. You know, all the basic good things you'd want for big damage. Uh, this guy needs zero accuracy. Any accuracy that I got just happened to fall in the numbers here. I went with an attack necklace, uh, I mean an attack ring, a crit damage necklace, just uh, straight up I got an HP banner with some attack percentage, that's that's such a good roll on attack percentage I ignored an attack banner. Uh, if I could find an attack banner with that kind of a roll and speed I would absolutely wear it and I haven't even rolled some of this up. This is a middle of the game, middle of the road type build. I didn't put crazy gear on him. So. What did I end up with? My goal was to get over 200, just a little over 200% on crit damage, and I wanted tons of attack. This is kind of the balance point on him, a little bit over 200% crit damage, and then you can kind of start stacking attack past 4,000. Seems to be the best way to build him after testing him a couple times. Uh, you know, I tried to get a little HP on him so that he's not always the target. This guy's squishy. I did not build him with any defense. He's, he's he built like a nuker. And then I went to test him. Uh, let's just do a baseline test. This guy really does rock. Hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's do a little baseline test. Uh, this guy will never be your speed farmer simply because he's not all AoEs. But we're going to take him into 12-3 to see what he's got. Uh, real quick, let's see my speed farmer go so we have something to kind of baseline him against. This guy is 100% speed farm. He just kills. We've got 22, 23,000. I saw 27,000. His damage builds up with the masters I got him. I saw almost 30,000 at the end. That's a speed farmer. Five second run. That's what you want to see. High crit damage. Just high damage output. The reason he'll still be my speed farmer is because he's all AoEs. Let's do this again though. Let's check out Pitiless. Pitiless of the Pitiful? I don't know about that. Let's see. So what we're looking at is his damage numbers. Now when I go in here, his AoE will be clear. His single target, when he kills an enemy, he's not getting that second hit. So when you, if you see 30,000, that's a 60,000 hit if he were to take both hits. If I do manage to get weak hits, my crit rate was a little low, if you noticed, because I'm using his crit aura. And it still is under 100% because I'm trying to get the most out of him. So if I do get a non-crit, you might get to see him hit twice. He'll still just tear everything up. So here comes the the pitiful. The pitiful. This guy has amazing, amazing numbers. 40-something thousand. Now his damage is going to ramp up. That would have been almost 50,000. That would have been almost 60,000. Because those are two hitters. He's just killing them on the first move. 50,000 a slam. And look at him go with this between relentless gear and turn meter boost. Even his single targets just clear in these ways. Now I call him a bad farmer. With a single target attack and one AoE, he still did that in 19 seconds. We're just watch it again while we talk about this guy. This guy is sick, right? Now imagine if I had 20 extra percent damage on his A1 and 25% extra damage on his A2. And imagine if that cooldown were down by one from a book and two if I had reflex gear instead of the relentless gear. This guy, he also is healing himself with each crit for 15% of that massive damage. There's no debuffs on those guys. That's just straight up raw damage. Outperforming by pretty much twice the damage of my speed farmer. So, obviously, there's places to put this guy. I mean, uh, but let's arena let's go in the arena and see if we can get lucky uh, again unbooked here's a team we just want to go faster than her and then we want to debuff them we want him to slam them anything that's left rosin can clean it up 
this guy, no books on him. We'll go over his masteries here in a minute because I'll show you a couple different builds I think would be great on this guy. He's at 61,000, and this is a support character with unkillable, so we're going to have to ride this one out. Uh, that's unfortunate. But there she goes. Uh, let's, let's, hit, let's hit a couple times. This guy can nuke. Here is a stacked defense team. It actually this could get this could get rough. How whew. I don't think we're getting through this guys, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna try it anyway. Let's see if we can even get around to him. Alright, we're gonna boost our speed. Take their defense down. Look at look at that. Just melted them. 50, 60,000, man. This is the pitiful? I think not. He doesn't bring anything for your team. That's that's the problem with him. He does nothing for your team except for kill. Let's uh, let's go to a dungeon. Let's see why. This is where you would be like, well, why would I bring this guy? We're going to Ice Golem, and I usually right here have Solus. I get some control and some pretty big damage out of him. But I've got support, support. I've got this guy stunning and bringing everybody down. I've got another guy who can revive. I've got room for a spot to just kill things. I really do. In this team with revivers, I can take him in, and even if he kills himself, hopefully he'll land just at the right time to actually kill wave two. Let's see how this goes before the reflect damage is up. But this is the same team that I showcased in my Ice Golems video. I mean, look at the guy go. At least on the next wave. I we're, I'm just gonna slow this down. Well, let's let's wait till we get to the next wave. All right, so he's back up, single target. We'll just let it run through. I mean, look at that. That that's before any decreased defense is down. He went a little too fast. I did make him fast, and he boosts his turn meter so often he just gets right back around to it. Now here's where he's gonna go up against reflect damage, but he heals himself every crit. So, and that's going to get me talking about builds in a minute. The way I have him built, I never want to tell you guys how to build your character. I'm giving you an idea and showing him off. Relentless gear just fits really well with that turn meter boost and a little bit of speed. He's around 180, about average, and he just constantly is going off. Uh, I think Reflex, especially once he's booked, could be better but in the end the set is way less important than the stats we've got big stats on him i should have put him in the lead for that crit i didn't even think about that uh he's doing he's doing just swell without it he doesn't have war master so he's not going to do any of the extra big attacks get war master procs on the on the boss or anything so i tell you what i'm gonna speed through this and then we'll come back and we'll go a little further on this build talk about masteries and stuff finally obviously no speed run there um even though she has war master so does alton he's a clan boss killer um i believe stagnite does i know apothecary does and no this apothecary may be built more tanky because i'm done using him in clan boss a anyway anyway look who got the most damage out of that it was all mainly wave control wave kill not control saying the word control and, and if you here's the thing if you've got a slot in any team and this guy's built out he does enough damage to constitute bringing him into your team just to smash through waves and if you wanted to put war master on him he could actually do some work on the boss but let's real quick talk about some builds because i, I he could do this in dragons uh, i took him through fire knight he is not good for spiders now early game progression he's amazing in spiders man he's just killing them every move he's killing them he's increasing his turn meter killing them going back to the aoe if you had him booked out it'd be even better if you had him in lifesteal gear mixed with the life drinker mastery and his natural ability to heal off of crits this guy could be your spider tank for 1920 uh stage 19 in spiders 
the, the hardest stage possibly on any dungeon, stage 19 on spiders, he could stand there and take the hits. And if let's go to his masteries and I'll explain. If you uh, if you were on spiders 19 with this guy, here we go, masteries. All right, so you could take what I did. I took my crit, a little extra damage when I'm full of health power. I started going for speed as I kill enemies because this guy kills enemies. Um, increases damage inflicted for the first hit on each enemy just to help him kill. Now I would like to have shield breaker, especially now that I know he can kill in the arena. This would be useful. A lot of the higher end teams are going to have at least one shield set on or if they go first and put up a buff. But anyways, I took cycle of violence. This helps me a 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill. If this were me, if the damage inflicted exceeds 30% of the target's max HP, it's going to do it. It's going to. So if this was mixed with that reflex set, he would constantly be coming back. And he was booked. Just constantly coming back to that AoE. Uh, I still get benefit from that. Uh, I did take when I kill an enemy, I get a shield that makes him more tanky as he's killing things. Kind of like you would do with a farmer. This is an amazing ability for a farmer until you get late game with a really good farmer. Your Kel can put this on. And every time he kills one of them enemies, he shields himself up. Helps him get into the next wave. Uh, kill streak just kind of stacks a little bit of attack. And I went for Hel Helm Smasher. You could easily, if you wanted to kill bosses, you could go into War Master. But easily could have went for Flawless Execution. It would be, these things are kind of one and the same. Only the extra crit damage is guaranteed. Whereas Helm Smasher has to proc. But when it procs, it procs hard. So builds let me talk about builds be, be right back got to do something about that dog all right so the tennis ball didn't work builds like let's go into these masteries and let me let me finish talking about i did go not only did i go for helm smasher it took anything that helped me cycle with damage protection uh i do i didn't get life drinker he does that on his own better in fact so i just took the shield you could you don't have to copy masteries think about these things on your own but this is obviously what i'm using and it's effective i took a little bit of defense uh resistance it wouldn't matter much i took defense and these less damage from aoe's some stuff to help help keep them alive remove buffs i basically wanted this a uh, 50 chance to counter attack when he loses 25 percent of his max hp uh the chance to counter attack that just keeps him cycling through his moves. Plus, even if it's a single target, when he counterattacks, he's going to put something on the ground. There's really no need to go into the support tree at all. He needs no accuracy. Um, it'd be nice to get, you know, Evil Eye, a couple, you know, the book, lore, lore books or whatever, lore of steel. A couple of those would be nice, but you got to go through a bunch of pointless mastery. So. I kind of got him down to doing a little counter-attacking and Helm Smasher. That was my goal. Uh, but ways that you could build this guy. A life still set. If you can still get him fast, get your crit rate, get your crit damage. In a life still set, man, back to a spider's tank uh, for 19. He's, he's not a spider's hero. I'm not trying to make this guy sound like you need to go out and get him. What I'm doing is showing you when, when you hear that you go to a site and someone says, well, this guy is no good. They, it's because he doesn't seem to offer anything. Hidden underneath that shallow skill tree is amazing damage, like amazing damage. If I had a proper in-game build on him, this guy is godlike. It's the truth. Damage-wise, is godlike. Uh, there is no more utility with him, so you're going to... You're gonna want the the heroes if you're who am I who am I gonna build next? Of course, go ahead and build people. I I did this for this video on purpose. I've got people I need to be building down here without a doubt that do more for me. Uh, Soulbound Boyer, I'm trying to get her up. I got new guys. Got Brago today. I'm trying to get these guys up there. But I did this to prove the point. You go looking around and all you see is you got a bad hero. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's bad. That means that somebody with 48 legendaries sitting in their in their storage has no use for him. That's what that means. But not all of us have Draco, 
sitting next to a girt tug going into it. Yeah, right? I mean, I, you know, the average player, me, spends a little bit of money here and there when I want to treat myself. And you pull a hero and then you look it up and you feel like you just got the short end of the stick. That's what it makes you feel like. This guy in Faction Wars, I've already took him in and uh, he can perform better than some of the other uh, I, I definitely have good Night Revenant characters. I mean, I've got Rector Drath. I, I've got some good ones. But in the end, he fits into my team just for damage, raw damage. Other builds you could do with this guy. The Life Steal is an interesting idea. But Stun Set, as my, once he's booked out, if you have good stun gear, not just... Don't put a set on anybody if it's no good. That's why I'm not in reflex gear. I wanted to do this guide in reflex gear and I just couldn't get the numbers right. When, when you when you go through all the real data mining, trying to figure out what this guy can do, you do want to get a little over 200% crit damage to maximize your damage. And then you can start stacking attack. It seems to be the spot where that's about the sweet spot. And matter of fact, I'm at the point where either one is going to be about the same. I could raise my crit damage, I could raise my attack, and they're going to pan out about the same. His multipliers are good, but the damage, the raw damage, and if I had him booked out, I mean, remember, you're looking at a freshly made, I made him last night, and then geared him up. I actually did two sets, I tried a, a couple of sets on him, uh, I went to Relentless to get the right numbers. This guy rocks. He rocks. He's there's nothing flashy. Just straight up murder. That's it. He's a murderer. He's he's a murderer and he's ready for hire. So the whole idea here, wh where are you gonna take him? Anywhere that has a flex spot. Uh, he can be your arena nuker, hands down. Don't even question that. You need an arena nuker. Not only is he good, he's great. You saw it. He's great. Uh, if you need just wave clear. If you have no other options for a farmer, you saw him do that. This guy can fit almost anywhere. I would never ever really consider him for a spiders team. And I would never plug him in before I had the elements of a good composition on my team. I would always have a good healer, some kind of good support, some kind of speed, some kind of debuff, and probably some kind of buff before I just threw him in. But he could be almost your singular source of damage and get you through at least waves now he has nothing fit flashy for the bosses so the bosses if you need a poisoner like on dragon you gotta have a poisoner you know if you uh if you need a uh, spider you need turn meter control that's he can't really control the spider's turn meter he earlier stages he'll smash through the spiders but he's just not a spider's guy that would be the biggest caveat with this guy but just because you hear your hero is bad or meh read their kit and think them through think about the things you could do if you threw a certain set on these guys what 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 is the potential of those two little skills he has even though there's not a single buff or debuff on them i want you guys i'm trying to teach you guys to think for yourselves but i'm going to show you how i do things so that you you can copy and paste if you want you know but like every time i do a guide from here on out on a hero when i show you my masteries take that with a grain of salt you know, this is how I do my Arbiter. And I honestly have actually worked with two people and told them about my mastery setup for Arbiter. And they, it helped them. It works. It's a great mastery setup. But that doesn't mean you you may want to take her in through your dungeons. You might not have a lot of options. You may want War Master. As strange as that is to me for an Arbiter, you, you do you, right? Always, always do you. We're going to cut this here. I don't want to keep these things long. But pitiless. I don't think I don't think that I would pity myself pulling this guy. I don't want an extra copy of him, though it could be fun. Just tons of damage going out. Uh, these heroes, there's more than, than what you see when everybody's got their own take on everything, but just because you're told they're bad, look a little deeper. Don't be scared to level a hero if you like that hero. You might just like the way they look. This guy's pretty solid looking, right? Plarium's amazing with their character creation. I mean, they're all they're all pretty amazing. But uh, whatever the reason you want to build a hero, you know, if 
if you're really trying to push content then then you might want to really focus your hero go back and watch one of my guides on a certain area and think about who you want to build this guy's not going to be on the top of your list but once you have all the pieces to make different compositions somebody like him is awfully fun to play around with i had a blast doing this taking a hero that i'll take your worst you tell me they're the worst i'll take them i'll take them and i'll make them do something they're gonna do something for me guys we're gonna end it here you guys go out build the hero you want uh there are better options not all kits are created equal but sometimes underneath the rough exterior there is a diamond hiding in the rough so guys have a good day and enjoy the grind